Hey guys, welcome to the homestead. So a lot of times I get people who come to me with questions and they seem to be questions where they can't figure out the answer. And it's usually about something, how to do something when it comes to homesteading. How do we do this? How do we do that? And I think a lot of times the, the question can be answered by going back and looking at what people did 100 years ago. Just looking at, at what people did 100 years ago or more and say, well, how did they do that back then? They obviously had that thing or they did that thing. How did they do it? How did they have it? How did they do what they did and thrive and grow? Because that's our, I mean, our country during the industrial revolution grew by leaps and bounds with technology and innovations and, and just prospered as a nation. We had so many blessings and we've been, you know, living out those blessings uh, until recently. <laughs> So um, if you haven't taken a look around the world or lately, it's a mess, especially even in our own country. So before we get started on this, I want to make a, I want to make a point that I am doing videos over at Rumble. Anything where I have to get into things politically, it could get me in trouble. I'm going to head and taking stuff off of YouTube like this because they have made it very clear I cannot post this stuff anymore on YouTube. Um, I, I don't want to lose the channel. I don't want to lose an American homestead on YouTube as a resource for people who are in the homesteading and into self-reliance. Um, I, I don't want to lose that. So I'm going to move stuff over there. And the thing we're going to talk about next over there real quick is the whole thing going on in the Carolinas and the Appal Appalachia. Appalachia. And because I, I used to pronounce it Appalachia because I'm from St. Louis originally. Anyway, all that to say... <sighs> had to say. Uh, Grindstone Ministries is doing their largest deployment ever. And I want to encourage you people to uh, look up that ministry and to support them. Uh, there is a lot of stuff going on right now where uh, apparent stories where things are being taken away from people in those affected areas. Uh, intervention by certain authorities um, that are preventing good people from doing good things. We're going to talk about that over there, but I want to make sure that um, they get, because uh, really they're the only, they're the only ministry I would, they're the only resource right now I would trust uh, if I was going to donate because I can't go help myself and I want to make sure that they have some funding to go do the good things that they do. That would be the only one I trust, Grindstone Ministry. So we'll talk about that over there. Um, also, um, we're going to talk about this today, this today, the war Clem, the war Clem. And I'll tell you where you can get one of these signs if you want one, uh, coming up anyway. Um, so a couple months ago, well, it was about a month ago, uh, the strong sisters who I've mentioned before on this channel, uh, came out with a menu from the 1890s, 1890, 125 years ago, approximately give or take. And they were making the point about this, you know, it being a, a lot of carbs in the meal. And, you know, and I'm, I'm pretty much a low carb guy. I do eat carbs, but, you know, it's small amounts. And um, I try to keep that at a minimum. And I concentrate heavily on protein um, because we, we raise a lot of protein. We have eggs here, you know, and all that stuff. I just got a bunch of guinea eggs the other day. And, man, those shells are hard. We found our guinea nest. We, have some, we still have guineas, amazingly. And they're putting nests in different areas and we're searching them out. And I actually had a couple. They're pretty good. Hard shells, though. All that to say, all that to say, I looked at this menu and I'm going to show it to you here in a second. And I noticed some things that they did not notice. Things that, you know, I think probably are a reason why we have such poor health amongst our communities today. Compared with what they had back then, because I've mentioned before on this channel, if you take a look at photos Beach photos and just photos in general of like, oh, I don't know, the 1950s, the 1960s, the 1970s. You will notice there are no fat people in those photos. Very few, if any, fat people. Now, let's just be honest. We're all fat. I mean, even I. I, I am like, I, I think I'm, I look pretty good. I've lost 50 pounds doing OMAD. But on the BMI, you know, the official scale, I, I'm still like teetering on overweight. <laughs> And, you know, if you look around our society today, there's no question about some. And let's be honest, it's okay. We're all there. We've all been there. But we want to be healthier. We want to live long, healthy lives. And I take a look at this menu that I'm going to show you, and something very clear to me stood out. Let's read the menu together, shall we? Here it is. It's basically a seven-day week, okay? This is the menu for, it's either a restaurant or some place that was selling some, some sort of food. 
And this is from the year 1893. The entire menu, let's just go through starting off on Monday. Breakfast. It says here, oatmeal with cream. Oatmeal with cream. Now, number one, yes, the oatmeal was probably not, you know, you know, <laughs> doused with glyphosate before it was served. So we have non-glyphosate, non-GMO oatmeal. I think most oatmeal is not GMO, but it is heavily glyphosated. But the cream, the cream was the first thing that stood out to me. Because if you don't know, going back to our war Klim picture, see, this was war Klim cream, war Clem cream. What is war clem? War clem, if you spell it backwards, spells a certain two words that I am not allowed to say on YouTube. For some reason, other channels can say it, but when I say it, I get strikes because I don't know why. There's just some blue haired keyboard commando that just loves to sit and watch my channel. And anytime I step out of line in the slightest, I get told about it. So it's oatmeal with war clem cream. War Clem. Spell it backwards. War Clem. Now, that War Clem cream, especially if you've ever made sour cream, you know how that's made with War Clem. You let it sit out and you basically let it rot. People today would be horrified to let cream, natural raw war, natural war cream, <laughs> War Clem cream, sit out on your counter until it clobber, clabbers, <laughs> whatever it's called. But you're letting it rot. You're letting it spoil, okay? And what that does, it produces a whole bunch of beneficial bacteria. Bacteria that your stomach and that your gut loves. It loves it. It helps you digest nutrients properly into your body. And here we are, the first meal of the day. You're eating war clam cream with scrambled eggs. So you got a good source of protein there. Hot, hot buttered toast and coffee. Coffee's always good. You know, at least one cup. I have one cup a day. One cup of coffee a day. That's it. Black. Nothing in it. No war clam cream in it. Just coffee black. Okay. And then hot buttered toast. I would bet you dollars to donuts that that butter on that hot buttered toast is war clam butter. It's not been pasteurized. It's not been homogenized or, you know, as some other, it hasn't been brutally tortured before it was consumed on that hot buttered toast. It's war clem. It contains beneficial bacteria that you ingested, that your gut and that your stomach loved. It helps you process food better. It helps you sleep better at night. That's what good probiotics does for you. Let's take a look at dinner. You had a soup, okay? Beef olives. I have no idea what beef olives are. I'll maybe Google that later. If you know what beef olives are, please leave a comment below. Potatoes, stewed tomatoes, bread. Oh, and look, there's more butter again. Bread, bread. You know, and I didn't mention this with the toast up on breakfast, but how much do you want to bet in 1893 that that bread was also fermented? It was fermented bread, ladies and gentlemen. It was sourdough because that's the only way you made bread. Most people made bread back then. You didn't have instant yeast at the grocery store back then. You didn't have it in 1893. You made bread like everyone else made bread with sourdough. And that went with also with that toast up there at breakfast. You had a fermented bread, a, 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 something that your body, your stomach could use those probiotics that you're ingesting from other sources to easily digest. How many people in my audience, leave a comment below, how many people in my audience are gluten insensitive, are gluten sensitive? You can't eat gluten. Why? Because most of the bread out there has been adulterated. And yes, there are other things, glyphosate, all other stuff. I get it. But your body is crying out for probiotics and crying out for bread that it can digest. The Bible says that bread makes, you know, is good for man's heart. You know, look it up. Bread is good for man's heart. So why can't we eat the bread today? Well, because it's not sourdough. It has, the, the grains haven't been fermented and we have no probiotics in our diet. Now, ne next one on the dinner list, which it, for most of you who are not in the South, dinner means lunch. Lunch. Okay. Dinner means lunch. Berry pudding. It says berry pudding. 
Now, I, I don't know if this was like the English version of pudding because it could have been or it was actually our version of pudding, what we pudding, we know as pudding today, like the creamy pudding, you know. But either way, if it was the pudding that we know and love today that we like to eat, you know, as a dessert, well, then that would have been something like uh, that would have been probiotics also from War Klim, War Klim. Again, more war because it takes war clim to make pudding today. But if it was like the English version of pudding, which is more like a cake, because England, I mean, they're still using those poor, poor guys. They're using the metric system. <laughs> they don't know how to make pudding either. But yeah, okay, so they're eating bread, but that still would have been fermented sourdough bread to make that pudding. All right, now we move to supper. Cheese fritters. How much do you want to bet that that cheese was made from war clim? War clam. Fritters. Oh, look, more bread and butter. A fermented bread. Fermented bread. Good for probiot good for digestion. And then butter with probiotics. War clam butter. Baked apples. Oh, and then there's cream cake. How many of the ingredients that went into those that cream cake were fermented? I would say most of the ingredients into that cream cake were fermented. And you look at this, if it gives you the recipe down here of the cream cake. The cream cake is made with one cup of war clam. <sighs> full, full, ladies and gentlemen, of probiotics. Full, absolutely full. And I guess the one cup of sugar also included there because people were like, oh my gosh, a whole cup of sugar. I bet you that sugar wasn't refined sugar like we have today. I bet it was raw sugar coming from plants, unadulterated, without all kinds of chemicals in it and chemicals used to make it pure. Um, two scant teacupfuls of flour. I don't know what a teacupful is compared to a regular cup, but, you know, people back then obviously knew. Leave a comment below if you know what that is. But flour, flour probably not, in, you know, without glyphosate. Uh, two teaspoons of baking powder, two, ta two tablespoons, or no, one tablespoon of war clam butter, one egg, probably a farm-raised egg that was a free-range, came from a free-range chicken, it says bake in jelly tins in a hot oven, filling a teacup of a teacup of sweet war clam cream. See, do you see all the probiotics in this menu? Just, this is just Monday for crying out loud. Go back through the rest of this recipe. I'm not going to go. We'd be here all day. And look at all of the probiotics that you were eating throughout the week. Ladies and gentlemen, your diet is screwed up. It's screwed up. Your poor diet. No wonder we're all fat. <laughs> it's ridiculous. We're not, we have no probiotics in our life. When you go back and you think about all of the things that they ate back then, things were fermented, things were aged. I have, we're getting right to, winter, fall is coming. I'm getting right to, um, uh, I'm going to, I have some lambs, some rams that I'm going to butcher. And I'm going to be hanging those legs of lamb up in a smoker, and I'm going to be hanging it in my pantry. No refrigeration, no nothing. They'll be they'll be salted and they'll be cured, and they'll be hanging until I decide to eat those. You know, and that there's there's probiotics. Don't don't kid yourself. There's probiotics. There's bacteria involved in that, and those are gut healthy probiotics, things that your digestive system needs, and. It really needs it for all kinds of things to to help help you have a good body to grow and to sleep even see how, see how much probiotics affects your sleep and everyone today tells you they aren't getting good sleep you you'll burn most of your fat throughout the day in your sleep do you know that people are like i gotta do cardio up and down the hills and around the roads no no you'll burn a lot of fat if you sleep but no one sleeps today number one they got these stupid cell phones by their head and wakes them up every day at 3 a.m <laughs> Because there's some crazy signal that goes out to wake you up. They don't want you to sleep. They want you to be sick and dumb. And so, you know, put I, I sleep with this across my room. I sleep with it across the room. We're, we're, a, we're a mess, ladies and gentlemen. War Clem. War Clem. If you're interested in this, you can get this over at JS Genesis Designs. I'll put a link up on the screen. You can get, get that. JSGenesisDesigns.com. They're selling these signs. And yes, we made, uh, at some point, I'm, I'm going to do a t-shirt, the War Clem t-shirt. If you want to join the War Clem clan, the War Clem clan, we're going we're to sell t-shirts. I'm going to get that done. It's, it's on my list of things to do. And sometimes the, the list of my things to do is quite long. 
All right. What do you think? Leave a comment below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, this is one of the reasons why, guys, I push Perfect Pickler. This is one of the reasons why I decided to buy a company, even though I could, I could forecast, you know, the financial future of this country and the financial future of business. I understand there's, there's like trying to get parts for this thing has been, I understand, you know, speaking of grindstone, I understand Bear's frustration of trying to find good uh, inventory uh, because, Holy cow, we have no manufacturing in this country. But the reason I took this on at this stage of our country's demise, let me just say that, is because I know how, how good probiotics are going to be for good health, especially in the times that we're going to be facing. And I think I can find a market for it. Probiotics are very, very important. We always have probiotics. I have, uh, I have War Clem Kiefer out there, War Clem Kiefer, Okay, and then I also have probiotics made with pickles and some other things out there. Okay, I, I keep I keep probiotics on hand, and we eat these on a regular basis because I know how important that is for gut health. Perfectpickler.com, perfectpickler.com. If you want to get get started on that, growing your own probiotics at home. All right, stop by over at Rumble, and um, we'll go ahead and um, uh, get that video. I got some other videos coming out soon, so stay tuned for that. Uh, last chance, I will be over at. Uh, the Self-Reliance Festival in Camden, Tennessee in just a few days. I'm only going to be there for one day, one day only, folks, on Sunday. And all of the proceeds that we make there from selling Perfect Pickler and our T-shirts, we have our uh, Stupid Should Hurt shirt and our Farm Fresh Butt Nuggets, all the sales that we get from this are going to Grindstone Ministries 100%. If you uh, go over and check my video out that I'm going to put out on Rumble, um, kind of giving you an overlay of what I think is happening over there just based on what I'm seeing on Twitter. Listen, Twitter's the place to get news today, folks. I mean, I'll see things like my parents will tell me something or I'll go to my parents' house and they have Fox News on and I'll see something on Fox News, breaking news. And I'm like, dude, that was reported on Twitter like, or X, that was reported on X like two days ago. Breaking news. No, if you want to know when something's happening, you go on X. And Pete, you're, you're getting live reports real-time reports from people on the ground uh, there in those in those affected places. And it, the stories are absolutely horrific. Uh, so go check out that video at Rumble. I'll put a link in the description below once it's up. See you next time at the Homestead. Bye. Have you ever gone to a health food store and seen all those small bottles of probiotics in your cooler section? Man, can they be pricey. Are you really getting all you need to improve your gut health from those expensive bottles? How viable are they? Most of those products claim to give you between 8 and 15 strains of gut-healthy healing bacteria. Think of each strain of bacteria as a different factory in your gut. Each factory is responsible for breaking down that food in its own way. The more factories you have, the more the food is broken down and the easier the food is absorbed and digested by the body. A 2018 study published by the National Library of Medicine shows that one fermented head of cabbage can produce up to 114 strains a beneficial bacteria. That's a lot more food factories than you're getting from that expensive pill bottle. And that's just cabbage. Imagine the probiotics when you add garlic, onions, pepper, and more to that ferment. PerfectPickler.com and its home fermentation kits provide you with everything you need to get started making your own gut healthy food factories from the comfort of your own kitchen. PerfectPickler.com even provides a jam packed recipe book with many of our kits. Visit PerfectPickler.com and start fermenting your own veggies to begin your journey to better gut health. That's PerfectPickler.com. Hey guys, did you know you can become a patron of an American homestead? They get access to private videos and we send them gifts from the homestead that we make here on the homestead. And we also enter our patrons into special giveaways that are only available to them. And before you go, please check out these other great videos. Go ahead, click. Oh wait.